But the big story, and great to have them next to us, the two, two girls here, of course, uh, so unlucky in the end, really. Heather, it just, uh, was it the time of your life, these, these two, three weeks in China? Yeah, to be honest, it was the time of our life. Uh, it's been nine months of preparation uh, this year, and um, to go out in a semi-final and uh, come to all with, uh, with Brazil was uh, fairly good with about 15 minutes to go, and then it was heart-wrenching for them to get their third goal with about 10 to go. So uh, it, it has been a good, good two, two or three weeks, and um, we are happy with, with the way we've gone, but at the same time, um, disappointing last night watching the semi-final, semi um, hoping that we would have been in, in that. And Sarah, did it ever enter your mind that this tournament was something that you were going to give a real shot to, that you were going to do something special in China? Um, definitely. Um, a lot of people actually wrote us off and, um, I mean, before we got there, uh, I think our, our expectations are a lot higher than, um, I guess, the general public of Australia um, thought we'd go. But um, we always knew what we wanted to do and actually winning, winning a game at the World Cup you know, wasn't wasn't a, a huge feat for us. We were always expecting more than that. So, well, you hadn't gone into the World Cup uh, previously with any wins. It certainly changed with a four-one win against Ghana. And Heather Gary, you're the scorer of a World Cup goal, which is something Robbie Slater can't attest to. Given, oh, thanks for reminding <laughs> me. See what he does to me all the time. Even the illustriousness of his career, and that's not something he can lay like, claim to. This was a great result. But talk us through this goal in particular. Some header. We don't see that in the A League, and I don't say that to. Well, him I could never have scored a header like that. <laughs> that's <laughs> another point. It was, um, it was practice at uh, our familiarisation session the, the day before and the girls were actually taking the mickey out of me because <laughs> I can't normally head the ball very well and it took about three or four takes to, to, to do it right and when the ball came over from um, Di Aligic it just seemed natural and <laughs> it was far post and exactly what I sort of practised. So it was good, good feeling to score at a World Cup. Oh, fantastic! So, yeah. yeah, you had played Ghana before, and you don't have to grin at me like that as well. I know I didn't <laughs> score. <one. Yeah. laughs> you had played Ghana in the last World Cup, and they're a much more uh, difficult opponent last time round. You really put the cleaners through them. No, I, I don't. I don't think that. I think they were fairly similar to last World Cup. To be honest, um, I just think our team has has improved so much collectively, and I, I, I think individuals uh, have have improved a lot as well. And and we just showed that against Ghana, we didn't just beat them one or two nil. We we pumped them. 4-1 it was so uh, it's great to see and um, it just show, show how, shows how far we have come. Sarah what about uh, for you what, what's one of the, the highlights of the whole tournament look we know about the Brazil game but apart from that what was one of your highlights? Um, probably the draw against Norway when yeah. um, Devana scored that goal in the last 15 minutes and um, Tommy had left us both on the bench and just to come on. You hate um, that? Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> you can say something to Tommy now. Yeah. Say down the barrel. Start if you want. me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just yeah, it was just yeah to be a part of that yeah. and, um, to come on with 20 minutes to go and just you know run a market was awesome, it was yeah. fun. So. You've also scored your own World Cup goal and, and really caught the eye over in China too. Blistering pace you've got, Sarah. But talk us through your goal and and what it's like to score at the at the ultimate in a sporting contest. Um, well, I think that was about 15 minutes into the game and I'd already missed about three <laughs> three in front of goal and that was quite frustrating. But um, this was actually with my standing leg. <laughs> <laughs> they all count. Yeah, they do. But um, I think, yeah, I copped it after that with my left. And yeah. apart, but apart from your football, which is notable, and your technique, etc., your pace is really something that caught the eye. Have you got an athletic background particularly? Uh, I used to be a sprinter, but um, I'm it not helps. one for individual <laughs> sport. Yeah, so the quarterfinal against Brazil. Now, it was massive news back here. I'm sure you were getting a, a sense of it in China when you were doing your thing. Yeah, it all was, Andy, wasn't it? it was, well, every game was It was just, the talk of the are, town. You now, girls were front page, back page. Marta, they've got the, the Women's Player of the Year at the moment in Marta, and uh, Barbieri is a fabulous goalkeeper, but probably uh, just got found out for having a little bit of a lack of height. Great start for Brazil. Tom Somani, I thought very interestingly, Sarah, said this was the team's worst performance in the tournament. Do you share that view? Uh, the, the thing was, we, we really needed to win the ball in midfield. Um, they're, they're some of the world's best players in midfield. Uh, we, as you see here, we scored a hmm. scored a goal, um, you know, by default, I guess. Oh, you got a tail back. count, eh? Yeah, and I mean, we, we took our chances, and he was a great header for. There's another one that's she's been taking a leaf out of your book, Heather. Yeah, the motorbike. <laughs> but, um, I mean, yeah, it wasn't our wasn't our best performance, but they're just. They were like playing men. Yeah, they're they good. were so strong. Credit where it's due, they're very good. But at yeah. two all, and given what you'd been through against Norway and then Canada, was there a feeling in the team that uh, these guys are good and they're probably getting the better of the game, but God, we can do this? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I thought definitely we could do this. I, I just think it, it come down to uh, a, a lack of um, experience, I think, when it was two all, instead of just slowing the game down and the pace of the game. I think um, 
yeah, it was a, it was a lack of experience and a lack of um, of, of, our, our, of our competition in terms of yeah, a, a national league that we haven't played. We haven't played in in major competitions uh, other than the the yeah. Olympic qualifiers. So I think that is a is a major component of our game, and I think that's something that needs to be looked into. And Heather, you uh, also said the winner that was scored by the Brazilian girl scored with the right foot. Tell us that. She, she never kicks the ball with the right foot normally. Yeah, well, we were speaking to one of the girls after the game, and they were just dumbfounded that uh, she scored scored the goal with the right foot because. <laughs> uh, She's left foot only and her right foot's for standing on, so yeah. it was a, a bit magic, like Sarah. magic goal. Yeah, <laughs> a bit wrong, like Sarah, she's got a gun right foot. At though. the wrong time. Yeah. Now, you did say that it's something that needs to, to be looked at. We're, with all this publicity and positive feeling around the, the Matildas and the, and the girls' game in particular, what needs to be done, Heather? What, what, what do you think needs to be done? I think definitely the FFA needs to look into um, trying to get us a national league, which is um, competitive games week in week out not just a competition that we all fly in and play four or five games yeah. in a week or two it needs to be 20 rounds just like the men's a league yep. that way we're, we're fighting for, for first and second and, and runners up and different things like that I think that's so important and, and we need to push that um, given that we've, we've done well and the media's mm. we've caught the media's attention well yeah, Sarah exactly. we don't want to finish with the World Cup just yet because we want to talk about the Norway game um, Former Olympic champions, former world champions. Was this the game that really turned it confidence-wise for you? Beating Ghana was obviously a great start, but to come back against Norway, a real powerhouse, how much did this galvanise the girls? Um, I think this, this was kind of a turning point for us with, um, with gaining respect in the world. And, I mean, before that, I'd actually spoken to Norwegian um, reporters and stuff like that, and they, were, they had already written us off before the game had started. <laughs> and um, I think I had a... I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. I bet you um, did. Wiping the smile off their face for a bit. So. <laughs> I bet you did. Your partner in crime up front, Lisa Devana, scored one of the goals of the year so far yep. in any brand of football. It must be exciting playing next to a player like that, similar to you very athletically, a bit of a different style. A very exciting player, though. It's, um, it was, once we'd scored that, uh, the goal and it was kind of the pressure was off, we kind of wanted to slow the game down after that. Um, I think at that stage we were happy with one all, but then how it, it turned out, we were all over them for the, the last 15 minutes. So... It was, it was, there was a mixture between, um, I guess, Norway were giving us too much space um, to get the ball to feet because mm, they, yeah. were too, they were too wary of getting the ball in behind mm. for myself and Devana. So mm. they give us too much space, so there was too much space. There was a height disadvantage them. as well. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's against everyone. <laughs> All right, well, let's say uh, the semi final started overnight. Germany have got through against Norway, the team we were just talking about. They won 3 0. They're through to the final. The semi final, Heather, tonight, the second semi final is between the USA and Brazil. Who's going to play Germany in the final and who's going to win? Um, I believe that um, it's a replay of, of the Olympic Games uh, in uh, 2004, and I think the Brazilians have got something to prove. I think the US haven't proved uh, to be a great side this tournament and the Brazilians have got so many individuals I, I really believe that uh, the Brazilians are going to come out and, and beat the US which is going to be a shock to the US but um, I think they need it, they haven't lost in uh, 52 consecutive <laughs> matches um, so it would be very satisfying for Brazil and I think it will be a Germany-Brazil final. And Sarah on the, on the situation with the leagues, we've heard about the, the need for a domestic league for women here, there's also talk that the US is going to restart a professional league for women, was there much talk around the, the, the various teams, in between teams about what's happening in America and the potential? Um, not, re not really. Um, personally, I, d I didn't hear too much about it, but um, everyone knows it's there. Everyone knows that you know, you're performing in the World Cup you know, to maybe get that offer. So um, I'm, I think I'm pretty sure Heather's... There's, yeah, most of the players are open to it. So. Well, I'm sure yeah. they would be. Let's Exciting. try and keep the girls here for a bit longer and get that league going. It's fantastic to have you. It's great to see you on Total Football. It was a fantastic experience you gave us through the World Cup. Congratulations to you, Matilda's quarter finalists. Thank, thank you. you. Just like to thank the public as well for getting behind us. It was yeah. awesome. They certainly did. You cool. gave them plenty of reason to, I've got to say. Well Thanks. done. We'll see Thanks. you around.